Good morning. Good morning. I have a couple of announcements today before we begin. Um, the first is we are having dinner at Sarah's this week. So we're encouraging anybody who wants to come and hang out with us to come July 11th at 6 p.m. to Sarah's. You can just grab ice cream or actually have food, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but come join us and hang out. It should be a good time. We also have um, Lakeshore Conference uh, Worship, which is on Wednesday, July 17th. Um, they're doing a potluck meal at 6.30, and then worship will begin at 7.30 at the Pine Tree Pavilion, which is near Beach 9. It is handicap accessible, all of that. You can bring a dish to share and your own table setting and a lawn chair. And after worship, I know Ruth is going to try to go over and watch the sunset, so it should be a, a nice service. We have been invited to participate in Waldemere Day with St. John's Lutheran. So they usually get a, have a day where they have a picnic and that sort of thing. They've invited us to come. That is on July 18th. And they've reserved the Picnic Grove headquarters, the West Lakeview Shelter. So you can check in around 12 with them if you want. You can get tickets there. Um, they're discounted to $25 for that day only. So if you go, another cup, those aren't gonna work, but $25 that day only. And then they're actually having a dinner, where did they say, 6 p.m. So they said bring a dish to share if you want and come have, they're gonna provide water, table setting, chips, and hot dogs. So um, if you're interested, you can get tickets now at St. John's office, Monday through Thursday, nine to two or you can go see them the day of the picnic and get tickets there. So, is anyone interested in going to that? Just so, okay, Dan is in. If you are, just let me know so I can give them kind of a head count to what to expect. So, um, Prince of Peace Worship and Picnic is coming up on July 21st. So, not this week, but next week. Um, so, we'll gather with not, Prince... Not next week. Two weeks. Two, yeah, that's better clarifying. Two weeks from now, um, we are going to be at Prince of Peace, which is 9263 Lake Pleasant Road. They have a beautiful pavilion, and then they also have an indoor facility that's great if it rains. So we'll do um, worship, lunch, and then bingo. They always bring out the bingo cards. The money that will be donated goes to Inner Church Ministries, um, and Dave Belzik always does a great job getting prizes. So if you want, you can sign up to bring a dish to share and remember a lawn chair and some cash for bingo. So, and that will be at 10 a.m. So you get to sleep in a little bit on the 21st. And if you come here at say nine and notice the sign that says picnic at Prince of Peace, you will have more than enough time to drive on over there and hang out with us now. So, um, we also have new office hours for Kelly. Uh, it's Tuesday through Thursday, instead of Monday through Friday, Tuesday through Thursday, 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. So that's when you can reach the office. All right, um, I'm going to admit that I'm a little bit off today. I have a double ear infection from swimming. So um, hanging in there, but if I seem lost and dazed and confused, that's what's going on, so we're hanging in there. Um, next week, Matt and his crew are joining the church family. So Matt and Allison are going to become new members and will be baptizing Charlotte, who just turned one this week. So, um, so we're excited, excited for that. So get prepared for next week. And I have been informed, and she's already threatened my life, but I'm doing it anyway because her children have requested this. Um, it's Narisa's 65th birthday today. So, and why don't we sing to Charlotte, even though she's not here, you can watch it back later. So, Narisa and Charlotte.
other announcements that I am forgetting. All right, if not, we'll begin with our further. <laughs>
grace of both our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Kyrie eleison. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Priest eleison. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy.
The psalm today is Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of their mistress, so our eyes look to you, O Lord our God, until you show us your mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. To wash up the scorn of the indolent rich, and have the derision of the proud. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities, for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Usually, 
you don't get assigned to your home synod when you graduate. Now, that whole process has changed a lot over the last couple of years, but nine years ago, how it worked is in December, I turned in a whole bunch of paperwork that I had to fill out for a couple months. And then in February, bishops from each region gathered to do what we lovingly called the draft. So they would gather in Chicago, one from each region, and they would have all of the paperwork of all of the candidates who could be sent out into ministry. And I don't know how they chose who got to pick first, but each bishop gets to kind of choose their drafting. And then you find out later where you're headed. Now I got to preference where I would go, but that doesn't mean that I would get it. So as I'm preparing all of mine and John's family for the possibility of us not coming home, there was a little bit of anxiety, especially from the moms who have this little grandbaby who was born in October of my senior year. We're a little nervous that the baby wasn't coming too close to home. So I get a phone call a couple days later from Bishop Jones, which I was very surprised to receive, saying that I would be coming back home to Northwestern Pennsylvania Synod. Still, I prepared my family. Most likely, I would be given paperwork for a church in a different part of the Synod. I could still be a little bit away, though this was good that we would be slightly closer. closer. Then Bishop Jones continued to surprise me when he gave me Mount Calvary's paperwork, which is not too far from my mother's house. Now, I was not allowed to talk to her about where I was interviewing. That's kind of anonymous for a bit. But I can remember the day we came home to meet with the call committee for the first time. My mom was babysitting Honor, and she kept saying to me, well, don't you have to leave yet for your meeting? And I'm like, no, we still have some time before we have to leave. And then it becomes 45 minutes before we have to leave. And she's like, when are you leaving? And I'm like, we still have time. It's fine. Well, we got it. And then about 20 minutes before the meeting, John and I walk out the door to which she's saying, only, only this close, this close, 20 minutes. And mom, we can't talk to you about this yet. So. I remember when I was handed the paperwork from Mount Calvary, I said to Bishop Jones, I know people who go there. I used to go to youth group events there when Pastor Phil was pastor. I've known Anna and her family my whole life. There's some people here that I, I know. Is it going to be okay for me to go back there? And his question for me was, well, will they respect your call and your authority? Because if they will, then we'll be just fine. Now the reason we have these conversations is because sometimes it's hard to come back to your home area. Because there are people there who have seen you your whole life, have watched you grow up. Luther Memorial, I was told many, many times as I was growing up, they all got to see me go through my tutu phase of life where I didn't want to wear anything else to school pickup when I would go to get my older brother. I was nicknamed Little Kern, my maiden name, at Footsteps because my brother was already really involved by the time I went through, and everyone knew him, so I was just Little Kern. So many had seen me in my younger days and then watched me grow up, going through all the various and sometimes fun stages of my life. And sometimes it's hard to come back after seminary and be able to be seen as this new pastor. I can remember going into Luther Memorial's office to have a meeting with Pastor Coleman shortly after my ordination, and Norma, the secretary who has been there for a very long time, whose son I went to prom with when I was a junior in high school, she struggled with what to call me. Uh, Kristen, Pastor Kristen? And I just really remember saying, it's okay, Kristen, it's fine. It'd be a little weird for you to suddenly change how you relate to me. Now, if there are concerns about pastors coming home and being able to assert authority or be respected, 
then we can only imagine the struggle that Jesus had when he went home and begins to teach in his local synagogue. At first, the people are really impressed. He seems to know what's going on. He has all of this wisdom. One of the things that you'll hear over and over again in the Gospel of Mark is that Jesus teaches with authority. This is another moment where people recognize that he does know what he's talking about. But then the people grow offended. And actually, the right word would probably be translated as scandalized. The people are scandalized. They are shocked by his teaching. And it's in a negative way. There's a negative connotation to it. So they start saying, well, what is this now? Who is this really? Is this really the Messiah or some powerful teacher? Because we saw this guy grow up. He's a carpenter. Isn't he, isn't he Mary's kid? Look around. His siblings are right here with us. But beyond that, what might seem like a description to us could be seen as insults to Jesus and his call. There's no mention of Joseph in this passage, so a lot of scholars assume that he has possibly died already. So as the oldest son, shouldn't Jesus be taking over the family business, making sure that his widowed mother and his siblings are provided for, instead of roaming around proclaiming that God's kingdom has come near. And notice that they call him Mary's kid, not Joseph's kid, calling into question his paternity. Go back to your jobs and your societal duties, Jesus, and stop trying to be something that you are not. Now, not only does this crowd dismiss him, but they begin to get upset because of him. Now, it's fascinating that these people who would and should know him best are also the ones who seemingly are caught off guard by who he is. But sometimes it's hard to come home and be in a new role with new responsibilities. What the people in this gospel lesson seem to have forgotten is that God is all about scandal and acting in shocking and at times offensive ways. It's in the whole history of our scripture. From the beginning of the world, God was intimately involved in creation. God molded humanity and breathed life into them, making them the image of himself. And God continued to do shocking things, taking Abraham, this old man, out to look at the stars and promising that his barren wife, Sarah, would be the mother of a whole new nation as numerous as the night sky. He sent prophets and priests to question and challenge the powers that be, asserting that God is aware and at work through the politics and religious traditions of that time. And then we have the biggest moment of scandal ever, the Incarnation. The fact that our God was willing to come into this world and live among those whom he had created, to experience everything that we go through. That our God walked among us physically and reached out to those who were constantly ostracized. The whole gospel of who Jesus is, is scandalous. He sought out not the powerful and the insiders, but the weak and the lowly and the outcast. He rejected power and fame, refusing to use them to get what he needed or wanted. And then he did the most shocking thing that he could do. He died like a common criminal. Jesus died on a cross put to death by those in power whom he had offended. He died and then rose again. And that is the way in which he made God's love known to us. Not through power, not through overthrowing the government or through military actions, but through humble acts that bring people together and that focus on community and concern for all. So today, the question that I have been wrestling with this week and keep coming back to is if we're scandalized or shocked by God and this good news today, or if we've become 
really comfortable with how we think God acts. Because, see, the message of how God works and how God calls us to act should at times continuously surprise and shock us and make us change how we view this world. I think sometimes we get so used to our normal routines, whether that's coming to church on Sunday and doing our liturgy here or volunteering where we do or feeding ourselves as we do spiritually throughout the week, that we sometimes forget that God doesn't always act in the ways we expect him to, and that there is so much about God that is both challenging and difficult. God asks us to let go of the norms that society has created, to move from the places where we might feel safest or most comfortable, to instead lean into this strange, scandalous new life that he is creating. Because see, our God is not a God that works inside the boxes that we would love to put him in. As Nadia Boltz Weber said at the 2015 National Youth Gathering, at the end of her really good speech, if you haven't seen it, you should look it up. This is a God who has always used imperfect people. This is a God whose loving desire to be known overthrow, overflowed the heavens and became manifest in the rapidly dividing cells inside the womb of an insignificant peasant girl in first century Palestine. This is a God who slipped into skin and walked among us full of grace and truth with sand between his toes, and who ate with all the wrong people and kissed lepers and touched the unclean and spoke through thirsty women and hungry men, and who from the cross did not even lift a finger to condemn the enemy, but instead said, I would rather die than be in the sin accounting business anymore. This is a God who rose from the dead and grilled fish on the beach and then ascended into heaven and is especially present to us in the most offensively ordinary things. Wheat, wine, water, words. And this God has never made sense. And you don't have to either because God will use you. This God will use all of you and not just your strengths, but also your failings and your failures and your brokenness, because God's strength is perfected in human weakness. So your brokenness is fertile ground for a forgiving God to make something new and to make something beautiful. And so today I give thanks to our God, our God who brings us good news in shocking, scandalous, and beautiful ways. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing hymn number 796.
sing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One, in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. Glorious God, you bend down to wash the feet of your disciples. Let the servant church arise in our teaching, our praying, our healing, and our doing. Make all your faithful people powerful in weakness and strong in grace. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Life giving God, your fingers trace the heavens and your hands mold the earth. Where there is wrath, bring nourishing rain. Where there is dev devastation from fire or flood, bring relief. Sustain the well-being of every living thing. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you speak and the nations listen. Open those who govern to the cries of all who journey with no food or shelter, particularly people fleeing violence, those seeking freedom, and those in search of community. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, your embrace brings fullness to those who are troubled. Anoint Doreen, Leona, Marge, Mary Jane, Ed, Debbie, Sue, Suzanne, Rita, Sandy, Carmen, Carol, Sue, Timothy, Missy, Brett, Karen, Frank, Linda, Charlotte, Mark, Tressa, Mike, Burton, Dane, John, Darlene, Family of Hayden, Ron M, Ron K, Paul, Eric, Erlene, Renee, Kathy, Bill, Ken, Norma Jean, Cheryl, Gloria, Karen H, Jean, Madison, Gia Janice, the Nocardo family, Noah, Chris and the Ganu family, and all who suffer in any way with the oil of healing and grant them renewal. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcoming God, in your presence, strangers become companions and enemies become neighbors. Open our doors to those who have so easily shut out. We have so easily shut out, particularly people who are different from us or who are marginalized by church or society. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you gather us into your house of many dwelling places. We give you thanks for our faithful departed. Inspire us by their lives of faith until with them we rest forever at our journey's end. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. And holy God, holy and merciful, in your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. Happy birthday. With you. Peace be with you.
close? How many uh, Lutherans does it take to close the community? <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. 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 I have a couple announcements I forgot at the beginning. Please keep Margie Drilney in your prayers. She has left to do the El Camino um, over in Spain with her son Jackson. So they, I know they left on Friday to drive to DC. They're spending a couple of days with Jackson in DC and then Fred is driving back and she will be flying over. It's gonna be a really neat experience, but a, a tough one. So pray for her and her strength and endurance. Um, pray for Fred, too, because I think he said this is the longest they'll be apart from each other since <laughs> they've been married. So the other thing is Norma Jean has moved, and her family sent Handy Dandy, I have moved cards with her phone and her new address. Um, I will put them out by the door over here so you can grab them. I visited her this week, and she's doing great. I actually met her in the hall. She was with her walker doing laps around the building. Um, and she's making friends, but I'm sure she would appreciate phone calls and visits. She's uh, very excited to see everyone. She misses you all. So if you feel like stopping by, she'd love it. Um, I think those are all the announcements I have. So now, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll now sing hymn number 396. 